Welcome back everybody. Today we are going over the upper that you see on this AR-15 lower here. However, it will fit on any AR lower and that is the Brownells BRN-180. So what the heck's a BRN-180? Well, uh, as you guys may know, Brownells has their retro line of AR-15 style rifles and they wanted to sort of make a modernized version of the AR-180, which is one of uh, Stoner's other designs that was very popular for many, many years and that honestly, there are a ton of guns today, even in 2019, that draw from uh, the operating system of the AR-180. I actually have a video on it. If you guys want to check that out, uh, just search my channel and AR-180, it will come right up. But what they wanted to do is kind of modify that operating system to make it so that it would work with any of your standard AR lowers. And the big key that's really different about this is, well, number one, it's piston operated, just like all of the um, AR-180 style rifles are. And the actual operating system is contained within the upper receiver here. So uh, big deal for folks who want to run folders. So a lot of folks use the law folding adapter and others out there to be able to use it on their AR-15. Well, this can use any folding adapter because there's absolutely no need for any sort of buffer system in here. Um, you can use skeletonized folders, things like that. It will all work just fine because as you'll see here in just a second, the entire operating mechanism stays within the upper receiver. But before we get into that, let's head back out to the range, see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this upper receiver, and then come back and check it out in detail. We have three different loads to test for the accuracy portion. Uh, the scope on there is the primary arms, first focal plane, Raptor one to six. So honestly, kind of low on the magnification end, but I'm not gonna blame it if it doesn't shoot well. Uh, if anything, it's probably the guy behind the trigger. Um, targets down range at 100 yards. I apologize for the um, jerry rig targets. I literally forgot to bring them today. So we make do with what we had and move on, right? Uh, it's super, super hot today. It's uh, over 110, that's the last time I looked anyway. And uh, we have some crazy mirage coming off the clay here, um, but should be able to work through it. Um, and it's like 90% humidity too, so super fun. Uh, anyway, uh, first up we have some 55 grain Federal, their Trophy Copper load. It's an excellent load uh, for a lot of things, uh, home defense. Some of you guys may like it for hunting, etc. It's a little bit light for caliber though in that regard, but we'll see how this barrel likes it. And uh, for those wondering, the lower here has a uh, aim surplus drop-in trigger, um, so it's a nice trigger. There's nothing I have to complain about or anything like that can't make excuses on that one so all right let's do it Ooh. that mirage out there is wicked guys for those that don't know what that is just think of like hot asphalt and the waves you see coming off of it, that's what's in front of the target. So that makes it super fun. Uh, next load up is a uh, 69 grain Gorilla Match King. Uh, open tip match load, it's for years. It's been a uh, mainstay here on the channel. It's one of the more accurate rounds across lots and lots and lots and lots of different barrels uh, here on the channel. It's loaded up with the uh, Sierra Match King open tip match round, and uh, we'll see how this one likes it. I didn't see that one, but if I yanked it to the left, it was me. Didn't feel like a good pull. All right, last load up here is some Fioki. This is a 77 grain, so it's gonna be hot for caliber stuff. Still a 223 chambering. And this one here has the um, hollow point boat tail round in there. So uh, we will see how she likes it. Let's go check them out. I'm sure regular viewers of the channel here know that I'm not super happy with these groups um, as it is, but we don't reshoot anything here. It is what it is, what you see is what you get. Um, so up first there with that 55 grainer, that is a three and a half inch group there. Then I believe we had that lateral stringing there. I just rechecked the scope mount and scope mount's good. So. Uh, no idea what the heck caused that with the 69 grainers, but right again, we're right at three and a half inches. Then the Fioki was definitely the best group for sure. Uh, so maybe it really just likes heavy stuff. I mean, maybe that's possible, but we're 
right at an inch and a half on that one on the dot with the Fioki. So uh, maybe it just didn't like those two loads. Who knows? With barrels, you never know. They're all kind of unique animals and have their own personality. But an inch and a half group, that's good. So <laughs> hopefully we'll just have positive vibes and look at it in that way. I'm not sure if I set it out there because that accuracy portion was actually filmed months ago when it was about 50 degrees warmer than it is out right now, maybe 60. Um, but the accuracy wasn't that great. Um, it could have been me. It could have been ammo selection. I have no idea. Um, but it's not terrible either by any means. It's not terrible accuracy. Um, but you never know. You know, we don't, like I said, we don't really reshoot groups here. And uh, it is what it is in terms of accuracy, what we get out there that day. Um, but the barrel itself, which we'll get into here in just a second, is definitely a quality barrel uh, by all regards. So getting into the actual details of the upper receiver itself. Out front, we do have a three-prong flash hider, which a couple things, it's kind of an homage to the AR-180, and uh, so that's good. It's, what's also good is that it's super effective. This is a really good flash hider if your objective is to mitigate flash and uh, keep some sort of uh, muzzle rise mitigating capability. That's a good way to do it because on the bottom there, we have the closed prong. What that's going to do is prevent dust from kicking up when you're firing from the prone. It's also going to direct gases uh, upward because of, this is our venting port and that's going to of course help keep the muzzle down uh, there's a couple other things that'll help keep the muzzle down too which we'll get to here in a second it does have a lock nut here on the rear so there's no crush washer system basically uh, you just put your nut on and then you set your flash header up to where you want it timed correctly and then you just back this nut up there and that's what keeps it timed so uh, we do have our MOC handguard, which we'll get into here in just a second, but I think we kind of have to get into disassembly before we can get into the whole operation system here. So um, we have our charging handle here, and if you kind of pull hard on, on the rear like that, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, this is going to pop out, which is our recoil spring and guide rod assembly. At this point, you can pull, you'll see this little notch right here in the receiver. All you can do is pull your charging handle out, and your bolt and carrier will come out. At this point, when it's new, and I should point out before going forward, this, I think, as far as I know, is the first um, BRN 180 upper receiver that actually left Brownells. So um, I've had this out before it was announced. Um, I think there was only like a couple prototypes out there. So this one's been around a while. I've got about 2,500 rounds through it at this point. So it's seen some use in a lot of different conditions. And the reason I bring that up is it's been disassembled a lot. And when it's new, this is sort of like a spring tensioned uh, locking device very similar to what there would be um, on the original um, AR-180 as well in terms of keeping the um, guide rods in place and locking up that way um, but what we have here is you just pull on it on this one I think yeah, there you go but when it's brand new you can stick a bullet down in that little depression right there and pry it up and it will come out um, but that is going to be our retainer there for the handguard and then it's even after all this time, it's still quite uh, rigid there. The handguard is, and it's meant to be that way because this is our bearing surface back here. And basically this entire portion right here is what locks up around that. And then it locks up on this piece of steel as well. That gives you a repeatable point of aim uh, when you're using your iron sights or anything or like lights or lasers that are mounted up here on the handguard. So the handguard, of course, is m -lock. The M-Lock slots are at the uh, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position. They're also at the offset position on top. The ones here on the bottom are not m -lock, but they're just cut for weight reduction and ventilation. You'll see here we do not have T-marks on there. The same is true of the upper receiver, um, but it's a very slim, very narrow handguard. And uh, in terms of comfort, very good in that regard. However, one thing I will point out um, after shooting this again, when it was out well into the triple digits, I will say that it does get hot after more than a mag. So just keep that in mind. You might want to run a vertical foregrip or something like that if you plan on, um, you know, shooting high volume. So the barrel itself is the identical profile, albeit a different length, the identical profile to the AR-180. So it's sort of like a, it's a medium heavy profile behind the gas block and then up front really lightweight, which is nice. It handles really well. The upper receiver, at, when it's dry, weighs just over four pounds, for those of you guys that are concerned with that. But it's a little bit heavier back here than really light up front. And we have our pin gas block that you guys can see on there. And the recoil um, system is very, again, simple. And there's a lot of guns out there that work on a very, very similar um, process. Uh, a lot of you guys will probably recognize the HK416 is very similar in this regard for piston system. So I'm going to go through the disassembly here real quick. 
and these things are real snug so I'm trying to make sure they don't shoot off and go directions I don't want them to go like in the lake um, <laughs> but here we have the actual piston and unlike a lot of other piston systems there's no rings there's no uh, really anything that could get damaged during disassembly um, but what they do when they actually make this is they make the tolerances so tight that it locks up in there um, and actually gives the gas seal without the need for rings or anything like that um, which is pretty cool um, in terms of manufacturing quality anyway um, and then we have a few things going on here so this insert is the one that you use for unsuppressed firing. This is the one that comes standard in the gun. However, they ship another one with it if you plan on using suppressors. And essentially, it's the exact same piece. It just has larger holes in it, so it vents more of the gas out of there. The geese are coming. Okay, I think they're mostly out of microphone distance at this point. Uh, but yeah, so the suppressor one just vents more of the gas right here around the barrel. And then um, it, this is a spacer right here, so nothing really going on there that's too fancy. And then this is our op rod that pushes back and actually pushes on our bolt carrier group and gets it uh, to cycle the action. So very simple uh, design. There's not a lot to go wrong. And I'm sure many of you guys have uh, guessed it, but there's really not a lot of gas that comes back into the action itself um, outside of the gas that comes out of the chamber. That's really it. So it's a very clean operating system in terms of back in the receiver. It's a little bit dirtier up here on the piston. However, gas piston systems, and people can go back and forth on this. Um, but in my experience, um, one of the, I guess, benefits of it is that uh, it stays cooler, um, but you're gonna get dirt one place. So it's either gonna be up in the piston system or back in the action. And I guess some folks have really strong opinions on that one way or another. You guys can discuss down below in the comment section. But our bolt carrier uh, group here is virtually identical in terms of the carrier to the original AR-180. Uh, the pin back here that's gonna retain your firing pin comes out pull out your firing pin. It's a chrome line firing pin, which is nice. Then we have our cam pin here, and that is a uh, nickel boron finished cam pin. The same is true here for our bolt, and the bolt, as you guys can see, does have a spring on there um, to prevent slam fires as well as several other things, but this carrier itself is nitrided. You guys can see we have a good bit of wear going on there because, again, I fired it a good bit, but that is that. Uh, the actual rods that this carrier rides on while it's cycling are these two right here that you guys saw fly out. So basically as it goes back, it's going to uh, get to a point where the, the actual springs are bound so much that it's pushing it forward and counteracting the force. This also, this piece right here, also acts as somewhat of a buffer system as well um, and actually absorbs some of the recoil. And uh, the buffer system here on the rear actually seals into the upper receiver, so which is why you have to kind of yank on it uh, to pull it out because there is a little bit of a seal, suction seal that does happen on there. But it's a very simple system. Uh, there's not really a lot to go wrong. And I mentioned earlier that um, it sort of is a very smooth recoiling rifle and has a lot very little muzzle rise and one of the reasons is also because of this system so if you think about where the actual uh, force is coming in from the op rods the op rods hitting right there so your force is above your bore so it's kind of causing you to go like that right every time there's no actual tilt but my point is in terms of pressure you're actually being pushed down a little bit just due to the design of the system. Now, again, with 5.56, it's not a huge deal, but for new shooters or somebody that's recoil sensitive, it does make a difference. And for somebody who's really concerned with split times, it can also make a difference. Um, really cool system overall. We skipped most of the reassemblies for time's sake, but I wanted to show you guys the last portion here just to sort of illustrate what I was saying about the uh, sealant there um, that the recoil uh, buffer here in spring has uh, when you get it back together. So basically, right about here is where I start to feel tension. Um, and then once it comes up and it hits the back here of the upper receiver, there's more tension and you kind of have to get it just snug and push in on it with a little bit of force. And that's going to keep it there under tension and keep it one unit as you guys can see here. So I'm going to hold my hand here just so you guys can kind of get an idea of the firing cycle, right? So the round is going to go through, gas is going to come up here through the piston. The cup there that we talked about is gonna vent some gases, um, and then it's going to push the op rod back. The op rod comes through here, hits the top of the bolt carrier like we talked about, cycles, comes all the way back, and then goes all the way forward, 
just like so, loading another round. Um, so it's a pretty cool system. And what's interesting about it is, unlike an AR-15 where the bolt has a lot of movement uh, throughout the system with the uh, buffer tube and all that, this is a pretty short throw uh, for a semi-automatic rifle. So getting the timing right is crucial. And uh, they seem to have done so with that system of cups. This one here has not had a single malfunction outside of what I'm about to talk about now, because I just noticed it and it made it caught my attention. So again, like I said, this is the first one that left that wasn't a prototype that came here. And um, one problem I discovered that I think nobody else discovered until me is that the original ones had a, a different actual dust cover than this one does. Um, and what happened was uh, because I fire in a field that's full of dust and this disgustingness and mud, depending on the conditions, is that I actually close my dust covers most of the time when I'm not using my rifles. So when I went to pick it up and fire with the closed dust cover, it would malfunction. I think nobody actually tested it like that. I think they would just cycle the round, if that makes sense, and then let it go. Um, but as you guys can see there, uh, the original one would stop it. It wouldn't cycle, right? This is, and the, they've sent me the right one. I just left this on here just for illustration purposes, but that's what was happening. Anyway, everybody who gets a BRN 180 upper now, you guys are going to have a fixed version. So don't worry about it. I'm just pointing it out to let you guys know. But what they did is they actually changed the radius angle on there. So now they work perfectly fine, even when closed, when you fire that first shot. So like I said, uh, around 2,500 rounds, zero malfunctions of any kind. So super reliable system. Uh, when you fire this gun suppressed, it is simply um, extremely pleasant to shoot all the way around. Like I said, the low recoil, the low muzzle rise, and then suppressed with the piston system is just fantastic. Pros and cons of suppress real quick, because I realize this doesn't apply to a lot of you guys who don't have suppressors, but you get some piston pop is what it's called, where excess noise comes out of the piston system. Um, but like I said, you don't get a lot of gas in your face. You get almost none, in fact, and it's just super smooth recoil. Very, very, very pleasant to shoot. If you guys look around online, you want to see people firing these with the folding stocks and all that stuff, you certainly can do so. They're out there. Again, I just don't have one. Otherwise, I would have. Um, but all in all, it's been a very solid system in terms of performance. Now, one thing uh, that some folks might not like is that it's not the cheapest system out there, but there's a lot of R&D that went into this, and there's a lot of specialized parts that go into this that are just exist just for this gun um, out there in the manufacturing space, which is very different than, say, an AR-15. So looking around, generally speaking, um, they're going to run around the $800 mark for the upper receiver, and I should mention as well that there are several different configurations as of this video. This is the first one that came out with the 16.5-inch barrel. It's a 223 wild barrel, if I didn't mention that already. Um, but they also now have a 10S out there, which is a 10 and a half. Um, and that one is very similar overall. One difference though is it doesn't have those cups uh, in the piston system. It has an actual switch for suppressed and unsuppressed firing. And I, I believe, it sh as of this video, it should be out anyway. They have an 18 inch variant as well out that's sort of a little bit more DMR configured, but actually the original AR-180 had a little bit longer barrel as well. So it's more of an homage to that. So I think that's pretty much it guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the upper receiver, by all means, you can post down below in the comment section. Um, but I really like it. I'm a fan of it for sure. And um, it's going to be a winner. I think uh, this series of BRN-180 uppers is going to grow. There's going to be more of them. I predict that uh, simply because it's a very sound system. And like I said, the base AR-180 operating system is one that so many guns have copied over the years or at least paid homage to um, out there because it's a really good system for sure. Uh, very reliable, very clean running as we talked about. So that's it guys. If you have any questions, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page as always. Um, might take me a couple days to get back to you guys. Um, but I do get back to everyone over there eventually. There's a few hundred thousand of you and only one of me, but I get to you guys. So just be patient with me. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed and you like this type of video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.